Okay, here we go. This is uh, going to be a, a run through on how we end up with uh, all this artwork in our security grills for the windows and handrails for around the slabs and uh, atrium. Uh, and this one is the security uh, on the air intake and exhaust out of the spider beam that goes out on the outer roof. Uh, we really want to climb through that and try to get through that uh, big whole house fan. It would take your head right off. So what you do is you go to uh, uh, Google Images. Uh, these ones were done with images.search.yahoo.com. Uh, I had a tab on top of the uh, computer, so I, it just opened every time. And uh, on this one, I would have typed seagulls. And I'll download maybe uh, 30 pictures of seagulls. Not artist conceptions, but actual photographs. That's important. Um, if you want it to, to look like what it's supposed to be, use a photograph, not a animation or a kid's drawing, or, or especially on trees and things. Uh, they're, they're ugly to do, but use a drawing. So once you have this uh, drawing, you go up to the top of your uh, toolbar up here and it says View. You click View, and down in there someplace it'll have a thing that says uh, Background Bitmap. I think they call that on all the drawing things. I think uh, that Google SketchUp, I believe they use the same name. It's, it's a free program that you can get from Google. Anyway, you, uh, and for 2D, for this, it works fine, you know. Uh, so you take it and it asks you where the first corner you want your picture to go. And you click on the screen and then you drag the mouse and to another corner. And uh, I generally make it a whole lot bigger. Uh, uh, some of these things, uh, like we did the drag, is they had a lot of scales and stuff on them. So we, we made a, uh, our, our line art drawing like uh, 100 feet by 200 feet, <laughs> although the dragon is 6 feet by, by 8. And then you, uh, once you get it all drawn, you scale it down. And that way, the, uh, <clears throat> all the intersections between the lines, if you trimmed them off at, at that big scale, they're absolutely perfect when you get to the small scale. And you're going to print them with a line width of, uh, oh, 50 millimeters or something like that rather than hairline. Okay, so we got a command up here off the top of the screen. It's called control point curve. Left button is control point curve. Right button is curve through points. It's control point curve. So uh, we take our picture here. Of course, I should not have zoomed that much. Control point curve. I'm going to I can basically figure out what that line is from, from the co color changes on the dark. All we're doing is drawing in the feathers right now. If you're doing this for a, a project for somebody, uh, you need to take your time and, and zoom it in and zoom it out to get the best possible uh, uh, resolution you can for the part you're doing. But uh, for a demonstration, all we need to show is you click on a, on control paint curve and you draw the lines. And if we wanted to see what our lines are, that's the ones I drew. I did this outline. Uh, I want to put the picture up there. Uh, and this one was drawn pretty much the scale we're going to use it. But uh, normally I would draw it much, much bigger. And then when I, uh, it's not so pixelated when I zoom it into the size I actually want. Okay, next thing you need is you need to measure the hole it's going to fit in. So what we got here is what we're going to call the frame, like a picture frame. It's, this is in inches, I'm sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. I, one click and I can change it to centimeters. It just, you just scale uh, 3D from some point times 2.54 and then let it modify the dimensions. One click after you set two settings and bam, hold that. So I, I think in inches. Um, I think like, like uh, Americans and British, we use inches. Anyway, it's 23 inches tall. That's um, eh, 60, 58 centimeters or something like that. It's 67 inches long. And uh, so that gives you the outside curve up here of, of, uh, of your window. Um,
Okay, it, that'll make your, your uh, curve up here. So basically you, you draw uh, uh, just a line down way over long, one cross way over long, and then you offset these lines by 67 and 23, and uh, you can group them at that point, or you can trim them and group them. J basically you're gonna, if you've got those four lines, you want to trim them. So you can subtract, it says uh, cutting lines, just select everything. It's so much easier. I didn't know that for years. And then you just knock off all the extra barbs that are sticking out. And then you come over here on the left, uh, and you can see that one. It says join, J-O-I-N. And because all these things are, are trimmed to, to the ends match, because you drew them extra long, they'll join right up into a rectangle. And then you offset that rectangle by the thickness of the flat bar. Uh, this flat bar is 0.32. We call that half inch here. Yeah, yeah, and you're paying for half inch, but it's not, nowhere near half inch. I take a sample piece with me and walk back to the steel stock and say, I want this. Okay, so we did our line art, and you can tell it's, it's actually a little bigger than what I, I scaled that copy thing. But we have our line art, and now we want to put our line art uh, down in our, on our frame. I might be set up to do that, I don't know. Maybe not, too. Well, that's close enough. Okay. Uh, I figure out uh, ahead of time uh, about what I want. It has to be small enough that you can't get a little kid's head stuck in your grill work. Uh, people visit, you know, and they, they look at it, and the whole place is basically a cage. They know they can't fall. They're between the stairs and the kid, and they ignore them. Not a good thing. 4.725. That's about 12 centimeters, thereabouts. You might, might as well make an even number when you're doing that. But four and a quarter inches of taking off a small kid to wedge yourself into that. So what I do is I draw a line, and then I... Uh, I just draw a bunch of parallel lines. You can offset them one at a time, or you can do offset them in bunches called an array. The array, rectangular, number in the X direction, I picked like 30, because I want way more than I need. And the Y direction would be one, and the Z direction that'd be out to you, that'd be one. And then they ask you what the spacing is, only for the one that you actually put a number. And I put down uh, the 4.7265 number, and then it, draws it, asks me if it's okay, and then it makes it permanent. What I do is I come in here and I surround with a box everything past the uh, frame down there and delete it. So I end up with these lines. And then I, I make the lines, uh, instead of having individual lines, I tie them together as a group. It just sort of glues them all to, the, to uh, something you can slide around. Now we're gonna take and move this group of lines down and then I copied this uh, this bottom one actually off the top one uh, I just moved it down twice <laughs> you know okay now it's not looking like like a grill yet but it's going to in a short time here you go up here to the top where you can't see to the um, menu for curve offset no nah, we'll do extend curve we're going to extend it by a straight line, so we don't have to deal with arcs. We don't want arcs. Uh, we don't want anything on the surface. We just want a straight old run-of-the-mill line, so extend the curve by line. Take this, we go down until it intersects. Intersect. If I wasn't just having at it, I would make sure they all said intersect instead of perpendicular or endpoint. But uh, actually, since we don't print the uh, full drawing, uh, the guys take a um, piece of flat bar and they put their what they want their spacings to be, and they lay it on top, 
and then they mark the frame and the artwork uh, where they want it to be. Well, I won't put that little piece of line up there. I could put it up there, and then we'll, we would use the uh, artwork to cut the line. Old guy can't talk and draw lines at the same time. Intersection. Okay, I didn't have to do anything with these because they're outside of the picture. Ah, uh, these got to be separated, I'm sure. That'd give us a separate line. Nope, not yet. Because, see, we drew right across this, uh, uh, these two lines up here. So, uh, I got to separate those two lines. Now I got a single line. Okay. So now I want to come over here. It says trim. That's, that's the thing I'm going to use it for a knife blade and cut everything else. So what I do is I trim off. Nope, nope, nope. Trim. Enter. And then object to trim. All you have to do to use these programs is learn how to read. You can make it um, have uh, 20 lines of previous commands up here. You can make it put all kinds of stuff down at the bottom. All I have at the bottom is what uh, things I want to be able to grab hold of to, uh, to make an exact point you know, to 23 decimal places, actually. And below that is the uh, coordinates. Um, like this is drawn right on the Z, the Z equals zero construction plane. But uh, when, the, when the pointer is on the screen, you notice this, this Y is 4, 5, 0, minus 5. Uh, we're at 4,138 on the X-axis. Hmm. Anyway, that's the only things I, I keep open. But if you, can, if you read the, the thing, like it says, select object to trim. The first thing it said was the cutting lines. So it says select cutting objects. Then it asks you for what you want to trim off. Uh, apparent intersections mean it didn't really intersect, but you're going to pretend it did. So we're going to take this and we're going to select those. Select these. And then we'll probably come in here just so we can not bump it and screw it up. We're going to put them all back into a group. That way anything I click here stays together. And I can, um, I can move the drawing all around. And you thought we were done. Uh-uh. Okay. So we did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Because we have ten spokes. Uh, and once you have your uh, thing we just did up here, you know, a complete drawing, you can group, um, well, you can group your line art. Well, that's all tied together. Let's see here. We have to do a little ungrouping first. Uh, the bird. Uh, what did it say to do? Select objects to group. The frame. And the bird. Okay, so now we can go uh, transform, move, and uh, we can uh, move our frame and bird down here to somewhere on the bottom out of the way. And what that leaves is the, uh, all the little vertical bars. You go to analyze, length, set curves to measure. You can take one of those uh, uh, dragon line arch with 4,000 lines on it. Put a box around it and click it. There's 247.269, 247 and a quarter inches. I had, uh, uh, or I had basically I subtract five inches off of every uh, um, bar. It's, uh, 
the bar is 234 inches, not 240, it's 234. So I can, um, um, I can subtract five off of it to give me cutting allowance. These guys that build these things, they're just absolutely wonderful not having scrap. They've got a, a, a little bowl and the pieces under two inches are in that and they use those too. When they go to put these, these, this, uh, this artwork back in, you see how many short pieces you have? And, and in the, uh, uh, the line art. You have, you have little pieces here, pieces there, the beak, the eye. They don't cut it off a new bar. They pick up whatever's laying there that, uh, it's near the uh, rebar shear and they use it. So, uh, if I'm uh, wanting to know how much material I have to do to do one of these things, well, that's all it takes to do it. Let's see if we can put that back together first, because I haven't printed it yet. Yeah. In fact, so I don't scatter it around the paper, let's put it back into a group too. Okay. You say, well, why do I care how many inches of bar that it takes? I can do the uh, a analyze uh, length for all 10 of them. Click, click. Cumulative length, 2,255.75 or four inches. And I will divide that by the 234 or 229 if I'm taking off five inches. And that tell me how many bars to buy. You buy the next longer bar. These, um, these frames, you can put the uh, measure the outer bar times one, and you can either copy, 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 make ten of them, and surround them all, or you can you can measure the length of one rectangular frame and times the number of frames, which is what we do when we have like uh, 55 on uh, one handrail thing alone, and 35 on the upper deck handrail, and uh, 30 on the atrium, and then the uh, uh, 12 big round windows and 11 small round windows. And then all the doors had artwork in them. Anyway, uh, what you do is hard, the hard part, the only hard part, believe it or not, is picking the theme. You're going to make a whole handrail around somebody's uh, balcony or deck. Or if it's got a flat enough roof that you can live up there, have tables and and put a beach umbrella on it and look down over the town. You want a handrail so you don't fall to the street. You know, a, a few uh, low and brows and Heineken's and it's uh, doesn't look like it's very far to step, but yeah, it's bigger than it looks. So once you you figure out how many panels you want, how how long you want them to be, so that. Uh, uh, at least your uh, longest wall comes out to an even even number of panels and if your short wall doesn't come out to exactly even panels and you can add uh, two inches or take away an inch and a half to make them come out even make the sides a different length you'll never see it never see it but then you have to have a theme we did the uh, the living level floors all the doors there's 26 uh, doors on that uh, lower level. They're all uh, things you find around a reef, fish, that, uh, which you find on a tropical reef in the Philippines. Uh, we have a main lobster, which is not from the Philippines, and uh, a North Atlantic squid, which are not from the Philippines. But the rest of them, there's 55 uh, uh, different windows all with, with uh, all different stuff and then the handrails. We recycled the drawings on the uh, outer roof handrail uh, because they were, uh, some of the pictures were the right size and the printing cost, uh, I think it's uh, between 430 and 780 pesos per sheet per, per artwork. That's a big percentage of, uh, uh, of doing it that is almost equal to the labor it takes to fabricate it, uh, minus the welding. The welding takes a day and a half a panel. But uh, to, to bend the iron and get it tacked, it's about the same price as the, uh, as the print. Uh, 
the reason that we measure uh, uh, the amount of flat bar is because you have to fabricate the flat bar. The more flat bar that is in the drawing, the more you have to fabricate. So it's directly related to the cost. If people want an up, uh, upfront price, uh, you know about how much you do in a day, and, and if you want to compare it to a similar one that you've already made, like it may be a fish rather than a bird, but about the same uh, density of lines on the artwork, you know, so much per square foot, you can pretty much gauge the labor off of uh, one that either looks like it and, and it all come out about two days, or uh, uh, one that was really ugly to do and it looks like that, well, add some to it. And if it's less, uh, we really don't uh, bother much about a half a day less, because um, nobody gets one panel made. You're making 10, 12 of, of stuff to do around the roof, or maybe 20, 25 and 30. So. Uh, it's not worth to get too uh, tied up into complications like that. Anyway, you get you get a theme. So we had a uh, reef things on the first floor. We have uh, tropical plants on the uh, fan level, and uh, that's like giant leaves. Some of them way bigger than they are in nature, and some of them that are 11 feet three inches in nature are six feet. We made them smaller. Um, and we also have, uh, uh, we changed the windows from fish to um, orchids uh, for the fan level. The round windows on the outside. And we had, uh, we, what she told me she wanted first was water lilies. So I had done water lilies. And since we already paid for have the prints made, we just recycled them into the uh, handle around the atrium. Because like I say, the print costs as much as the labor. And the steel costs about twice as much as the labor. So we can pretty much figure out what, what would have in one of these things if we make it. But this is not a, a, a Villa Cecilia business. This is a business of uh, uh, Boy, Benji, and Joe Mel. Uh, I bought the tools and gave them to them. They own every piece of tool they use for this, uh, including the workbench they work on. I gave them that too. And I told them if they got, uh, got any orders for these things, pick a room on the first level down there. And they're uh, 20 foot across the end and 22 feet to the hub. They're plenty big enough uh, uh, to build them. And you can stack, uh, when you're done, you can stack them against a wall someplace. They just need a place that they can lay out the uh, full length bars uh, without them running into a wall or something like that. Because we eventually have to take that, uh, the wood deck uh, off the catwalk up there because that, that's part of our passive cooling. The air, uh, it's working great right now. It's cool as the devil in there. Uh, they're working independently. The top floor and the bottom floor are working uh, just as designed, uh, but they'll work better when they're connected. But uh, So we, we got uh, some more welding to do this. When we're on vacation, I'm gonna have him uh, go back to working for us on, on uh, iron work. Uh, I don't want to say what I pay him a day, but I pay him pretty well on this. And plus, they uh, when we can get food, we give them food. Right now, it's kind of tough it, with this uh, lockdown. They uh, they uh, intercepted all the food coming into the town, and the government's handing it out. But the Baron guy level, uh, which doesn't give them enough if they got a big family, but if they're living alone, they got something to share. And it's what they're doing; they're sharing. But normally, we would. Uh, supplies a minimum, uh, at least the rice. And then a, um, when we're not making hot lunches, we uh, give them uh, allowance to pay for their lunch. And transportation if they have to go across the river, and uh, dental care, but not hospitalization. Not that we have not done some hospitalization, but we cannot afford it. We haven't got it on ourselves. We just can't put it on everybody that we know. Some of them understand that, some don't. But that's just the way it is. Oh, anyway, so we had uh, fish, then leaves, then recycled fish around the outside uh, because you can't see the two pieces of artwork at the same time. If it's on a, 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 a door between two bedrooms on the on the living level, and it's on the next level up on the uh, catwalk handrail or, or the uh, outer roof handrail, you can't see them at the same time. Uh, so I don't think it makes any difference. 
And then we went unique again on the next level up, and we did Islands of the Philippines. And, um, and that's basically we made a map uh, that in the computer is, uh, oh, I don't know, a fourth the size of the Philippines. <laughs> and we draw the maps. And the trick is to have to uh, have little outlying islands and stuff. Uh, and you can scale um, the drawings toward those little outlying islands. One drawing sits on top of the next panel that you have. And you keep layering them on top of each other until you've made the whole thing. It's, um, it's about as hard as it sounds. It's not, it's not, uh, not undoable. But sometimes you haven't got uh, barangay lines to divide the island up. And sometimes you've got uh, highways, but generally the highway is right around the edges. Uh, you have rivers like uh, Masbate just loaded with rivers. But you have to divide up that, uh, the area of the island so that it's a security grill. You know, you have to get the holes uh, no bigger than six, six inches by nine. And better, better smaller than that, generally. So uh, the islands were hard to do only, and we had to use all kinds of multiple scales and get them scaled to the same thing. If you get a scale from a, a real far off distance and, uh, and you drop your, uh, your line art on it, um, most of the time the, everything you get uh, is drawn to the north, so it's not so awful bad. You just drag them left and right and then scale them up and down until they start fitting. But once you get the puzzle and then you put a, another uh, overall view of the whole thing, it'll fall right over to what you have. Uh, didn't have much luck with uh, GPS images. Didn't have any luck with GPS images. They seem to be distorted on the edges. They're not uh, uh, truly a flat plane, and, and the pieces don't fit together. Of course, I already done drawn 10 or 12 before I figured that out. So, when we got uh, up to this level, uh, we generally have a pretty good uh, rally about what the, the theme for a bunch of grills is going to be. I was thinking predators, like tigers, uh, wolf, uh, lion, uh, you know, uh, anything like that. Husky, uh, Malamute, dogs. Uh, I, I told we could do uh, uh, quarter horses or uh, things like they race at the Kentucky Derby, we could do horses. I mean, there was a lot of things we could do, but uh, then we got to thinking, we want to have a, a, a deal with some places near water. Though we have never been in the water here, we know it's not that far away. It's half a mile uh, to the ocean. So uh, we decided on seagulls. Uh, there are no seagulls around here. If it's uh, uh, warm-blooded and you can catch it, they just eat it. They eat pigeons. and. Around here, they don't eat the dogs. Uh, now, men and all that might be a different thing, but around here, they don't—they don't eat dogs, and they don't, nobody eats cats. Of course, there's no cats. <laughs> there's probably three in the whole town. One lives in the uh, in the owner jeep in front of our place here. Jumps straight up every time I walk out there. He's not used to having anybody come in that courtyard, you know. Especially anybody comes right up to the jeep. Anyway, once you get a theme. Uh, make a lot more pictures than, than you want. Look at the resolution on the picture. If it's like uh, 900 by 2200, that's great. If it's uh, 463 by 512, that's probably not going to work out for you if it's got a lot of tight curves and shapes and things. You're going to be trying to scale in and scale out of a pixelated image and, and uh, draw a line, then you scale out and see where it ended up. Uh, not that you can't do it, but it's not what I would do if I was trying to do it in, in any kind of reasonable amount of time. Okay, so that's the uh, third uh, video for this week. It takes around uh, three days to get one of them to upload. And Wednesday night they don't upload at all. Uh, I don't know what that is. End of the month they don't upload either but generally about three days. I don't think it makes much difference because it's not a real inconvenience. I haven't got any uh, subscriber base or uh, people clicking views and things. Uh, it's there if somebody was to search for a particular thing like security grills. 
there'll be half a dozen videos that say security rules. If you're talking poured concrete, there's things on concrete and rebar and foundations and, you know, but if, uh, if you don't want to look at it or don't find it, that's all right. If you, uh, if you learned anything from this, uh, you can do a thumbs up, at least I'll know you were there. Uh, you can do a thumbs down if you hate seagulls, you know, if you think that all that is bird poop on your hood, well, you can say, I don't like seagulls. Um, anyway, say hi to the Lord today and we'll see you on the next video, if I can turn this off. <laughs>